Hello and welcome to DJI Enterprise Channel. My name is Florian Gier and I'm in charge of the French market. Today, we're going to speak about how to conduct high precision mapping with the Matrice 300 RTK and the P1. Hello, Jan, and thank you for your time today here in Valence, near the Rhone Valley in France. Um, can you introduce yourself to our audience? Thank you, Florian. I'm Yann Gaillet, CEO and founder of Geocaddy. I founded Geocaddy seven years ago. We're a company specialized in uh, high resolution and high precision uh, 3D modeling by photogrammetry and laser grammetry. Through our partner, uh, Escadron, we've been users of DJI drone uh, since the beginning. And uh, we, along the years, we specialized in uh, two uh, main fields, uh, the civil engineering inspections and heritage surveys. For photogrammetry, we use both uh, terrestrial photogrammetry, cameras, I would say, and uh, drones. We also use laser scanner, uh, Genesis, total station, etc. So can you tell us about the main benefits of using the Matrice 300 RTK and the P1? For me, it's, a, it's quite a disruptive tool. If I compare with, the, with what we had before, it's, uh, the difference is huge. First, it's very easy to set up. You get on the field and five minutes later you can take off. Then um, the quality of the sensor and of the optic of the lens is very interesting. The size of the sensor of the full frame gives very good quality uh, uh, pictures with minimal noise. The control on the camera while the drone is in the air uh, is uh, also a great benefit for us. You can set up the obstacle avoidance according to the environment mm. and the constraints you have on the field. You can control everything from on the camera. While before I, uh, I was uh, setting my camera before flight and then manually and manually. then you yeah oh. you couldn't touch it I couldn't touch it once it was in the air yeah so now I've got full control uh, and uh, and, for and you can change the parameters while in flight absolutely I can switch from video to uh, yeah. photography and backward it's uh, okay it's amazing very comfortable we fly manually most of the time because we are in an environment where we can't plan uh, easily automatic uh, surveys. Okay. So we fly manually and we try to keep constant distance with the, uh, with the structure depending upon the resolution we are, we are targeting. So when you get on the site, what are the first steps of the operations? Well, we start with a uh, safety uh, control and we check about uh, the environment. Yeah. Once that's uh, cleared, we start placing targets and we start with the laser scanning acquisition, uh, drone acquisition, and yeah. at the same time we have another operator doing the ground uh, photography acquisition. You told me earlier that you only needed four sets of batteries to go on for the, the full day, right? Yes, with the lens rack. Okay. It works perfectly. And when you're done with the acquisition, you take all of your uh, data, go back home and start processing it, right? So what are the, the, the main steps and, and the outputs you're trying to get at this point? Before we leave the site, uh, one very important step is to control the data uh, we have just acquired. Um, and then we go back to the office. We start uh, processing the data, we place the GCPs, etc. But we have uh, built a workflow where we uh, merge uh, laser grammetry and photogrammetry to reach very high level of precision. And once the, the 3D model is cooked, we control it in third-party softwares, so, because we don't rely only on the processing software to tell us if the 3D model is, uh, is good or not. Okay, that's a, a requirement from the clients or that's your own um, initiative? Well, uh, it's, it is on our initiative. Okay. We want to be able to qualify our data. We don't want to tell the client, okay, this is uh, two centimeters precise, <laughs> you deal with it. Yeah, believe it. It is quite complicated to control photogrammetric uh, 3D modeling. Uh, using a few control points is not enough, uh, especially on complex structures. For mapping, that can be okay. Yeah. But for uh, civil engineering structures or even more for heritage structures where you've got a very complex geometry, you need more than a few dozen of uh, GCPs. Sure. What are the outputs and deliverables that you provide to your clients in the end? The, the first uh, and main deliverable is the 3D model itself. Of course. What we usually deliver is a textured 3D model, yeah. um, usually a OBJ format. From this 3D model, we extract uh, our photos, 
um, vectorization for AutoCAD. Yeah. Um, and we also can provide uh, geometrical analysis. For example, if, uh, if a wall is leaning, uh, something like that. We are working also on the implementation of our models into HBIM to use our uh, models as a support for a large database. For the civil engineering, same type of uh, 3D models, but uh, there we, well, we extract out photos, but we will do also the inspection. We will look for uh, pathologies and cracks, um, corrosion. So we use the 3D model at the office to do the inspection. We don't do the inspection on site yeah. while we are flying. We do the 3D model, the 3D model is detailed enough to serve uh, for the inspection itself. So we extract uh, views from the 3D models to illustrate what we observe and we generate a report. Uh, so at the end, the, the deliverable in civil engineering is PDF yeah. uh, very often and a map. But we explain also to our clients that, uh, of course, the 3D models is useful for the inspection, but it will be also useful in the long term because you will be able to, to Compare. use it for future inspection uh, mm. and you can build also a kind of BIM for the civil engineering. Yeah. There are many type of users that are not uh, developed yet. Yeah. Uh, but these 3D models, the quality we provide uh, will be suitable for these. We've worked uh, recently in uh, Saudi Arabia to survey a large and beautiful mud brick city yeah. uh, in the northwest of uh, Saudi Arabia called Alona. Mm -hmm. So, for this project, uh, it's a good example. We reached this two centimeters uh, precision control with a resolution of two to three millimeters per pixel. And we surveyed all the streets. It's uh, about eight kilometers of streets, sometimes very narrow. We surveyed also uh, an entire block of houses, about 20, 25 uh, houses, in and out. The amount of images for this uh, project uh, itself is 250,000 images, high resolution. It was quite challenging. And uh, the advantage of the 3D models is that you can use it for other purposes yeah. uh, and in the long term. I guess you can see the before and the after if they do any kind of construction on top of that. Absolutely, we just did that. We, um, we surveyed the same areas before and after restoration consolidation and um, that was the opportunity for us to demonstrate uh, our capacity to uh, survey again geoference or 3D models at the very uh, same position. Okay. Even though uh, if the environment has changed a lot because the ground uh, went um, uh, 30 centimeters lower than really? before. Uh, yes, they <laughs> it was quite a bit of change. In the end, what we gather from this talk is that the Matrice 300 RTK and the P1 allowed you to both cover really large areas while still keeping a high level of uh, precision and accuracy. Absolutely. It's a great mission. We are very happy with it. It meets a lot of our needs and requirements. I am especially happy with the improvement for the safety. Yeah. Uh, the obstacle avoidance is fantastic and the uh, quality of data we, we acquire with it is, uh, is great. So. I'm very satisfied with this machine. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jan, for uh, the time that we spent together. I think uh, this talk would be useful for anyone in the audience. And um, if you want to check uh, GeoCali's website, it's uh, geocali.com. And uh, I guess we'll see each other soon. And I hope you'll have a great time with the machine. Thank you so much. Thank you, Florian. If there are other subjects that you would like us to talk about, please write it down in the comment section and we'll try to create new videos around it. And of course, if you enjoyed that video, please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.